Hello YouTube, I am Kev, I'm a full-time reseller, meaning I buy things at car boot sales, charity shops, anywhere else that I can find things for a price that I believe I can sell online again to make a profit. That is my business, that is what I do. In this series though, we are gonna go auction hunting. So if like me, back in the day, you spent hours watching the likes of Bargain Hunt, where people bought at antique fairs, antique shops, and then they went and sold these items at auction, and then most of the time have a bit of a laugh about how much money they lost then that is what i spent doing as well but it got me thinking if they're losing money at auctions maybe i can buy things at auction and sell them on other platforms and make some money and that is what i've been doing for many many years and that is what this series will be about we are going to hunt the auctions find products that i believe are well priced and i can sell online again and make some money from them there are going to be no rules to this series. I'm not starting with a certain amount of money. I'm not going to dedicate a certain amount of time. I'm just going to be going with the flow, checking out auctions and showing you when I do. I will be buying things from electronics to furniture to clothing to antiques to collectibles, whatever, it doesn't matter. And throughout the process, I'll show you what I've bought. I'll show you what I've sold it for. And ultimately, at the end, I'll show you where we're sitting in terms of profit. I plan to space the videos out probably about monthly, give us a good amount of time to get some stuff in, get some items, get the inventory up and get some sales out the door. So without going on too much more, let's get straight into the action and we'll see what we've got at the first auction. I've just arrived at the first auction house to pick up the very first purchases for the auction hunting series. So I've got three items to pick up. We'll get in there, we'll pay for the goods, we'll go and pick them up. I'll show you what they are. So the goods are in the car, not the ideal place to be showing you these. So let's get back and we'll have a proper look at what I bought. Right, it's the next day now, stuff's still in the car. I've made it down to the container unit. I'm gonna get this stuff out, I'll show you what it is. First item purchased was this Tambor Oak filing cabinet unit. Pretty nice condition to be fair. I don't think there's gonna be a lot needed to be done to it. This is loose at the top here, so where the key lock thing is. Don't want to pull it too hard, but that will need re-gluing on the top there. Not a big problem. Um, it's got its original key. It locks, and see when it closes, and you've got the uh, the tambour door. They're going down. Oh, there you go. There goes the, the top, so that does happen. That's just locked, so. I want to lock that again in a second. There's some nice drawers. But yeah, so nice. I paid £80 on the hammer for this, plus £19.20 fees. So £99.20 all in. I think I should be able to see back 250 to 300 quid on this. They sell pretty regularly. And yeah, the, with the auctions, it's all about flipping that money for some big profit. I'm not worried about five times in, 10 times in. It's just about flipping it over, double my money. I'll be happy. Next up we've got this. Now this does need a little bit of work. Obviously there's some issues with the top. So I will be cleaning that up, giving it a quick sand down, probably just a quick oil. And there is a little cube missing here. So I need to source a little bit of oak, get that in there. But I think that should be all right and be colored. But yeah, nice chest, Jacobean style. I think it's pretty darn nice. Paid £75 on the hammer for this, plus 18 quid in fees, so £93 on that. And I'm hoping to see back three to 400 on this, so hopefully tripling my money on this one. But yeah, it's a really, really nice example. Unsure completely on age, but on the back here, that says Muir Simpsons of Glasgow. Now their office closed down, I think it said 1941. So yeah, it's gotta be at least 100 years old. But um, I don't think it's actually 17th century. But uh, but yeah, nice. So that's that. And let's on to the last bit, which is this. A simplex time recorder, which I'm pretty sure is like a kind of clocking in and out type thing for back in the day in a you know factory office, wherever it would be used. Um, but yeah, I paid £20 for this, plus £4.80. So £24.80 in total. And I think, not entirely sure, but these are probably used for props more than anything um, but they seem to fetch some pretty good money a lot of them in America 
but yeah, I think there's one listed for 135, 140, something like that. So I'll probably aim anywhere around that, 100 to 130-ish. See how we get on. As I said, the auctions are a very, very different game. It's not like going to the car boot sales, spending a tenner and expecting 100, 200 quid back again. With the auctions, I'm buying quality items, items that demand a decent price regardless of their condition and just putting that little bit of extra touch on them and fetching some more money at the end of the day. So that is what we are aiming for in this series with the auctions, that buying at auctions is a viable way of making money when reselling. It's just an extra little string to the bow and obviously if people work full-time jobs then you can do this from the, the comfort of your chair at home, looking through the online catalogues, leaving some bids, seeing if you get lucky, picking it up in your leisure, listing it online, selling it, organising collection if it's furniture, sending it out, that kind of stuff. So yeah, fingers crossed, we will catch up in a little bit. I'll either show you how we've cleaned these up and got them listed or fingers crossed, show you them sold. Catch up in a bit. Right, I've got to try and fix that square on the cabinet, so I'm at B&Q. I'm thinking this might do the trick. Similar colour, so we'll get that back, give it a cut, see if it will stick on. I would have gone for the real wood, but there are no samples. There's not even any of it full stop. So, uh, yeah, it'll have to be this one. Worth a try for two quid. Right, back at the unit again. So I've done a little bit of work on the chest of drawers. I'll pop a couple of videos over this just to remind you what it looked like when I first got it. Did need a little bit of work doing, mostly to the top and there was that kind of square missing. You saw I picked up that little uh, bit of wood from B&Q. See what it looks like now. And there we have it. It is indoors, so a bit of light on there though. So the top was really good. All that really needed was just a real light clean with a soft brush that's come out really nice and then we go down here and would you look at that i think from a distance or even if you didn't know you probably wouldn't know because they're all slightly different colored over the years stuck a quick little bit of a uh, like oil on there um wood stain sorry this stuff pretty good stuff and uh yeah, seems to have come up really nicely. And all of that, just from this a little sample, a bit of a saw, a bit of a hacksaw, and a bit of filing down to fit in that square. Job's a good one. And the other project, gluing that on there, cracking stuff, bit of Gorilla Glue, and that seal on there, pretty solid now. That shouldn't be going anywhere in a hurry. And that's what it looks like when it's closed. All cleaned up, again, the top didn't really need much of anything, but did give it a quick wipe down with some sugar soap, and that is looking good. Locks very well. I'll get the key in there, let's have a look if we can unlock it. And that is a yes. Get it listed, and let's get it sold. Hello on another day and on another auction day. So I've been to the auction, I picked up some more gear. This is actually two weeks after the first auction because I didn't go last week, wasn't able to make it, but we've got some more stuff. I'll show you what it is in a minute because I need to update as well. We have had our first sale from the bits that I picked up in the first auction. So I bought three items from that auction, the two oak units, one filing tambour unit, the other uh, Jacobean style cupboard drawer unit and the time recorder thing spent about 225 quid on the three spent about 100 pounds on the oak tambour unit and that is what has gone so i had it listed for 300 pounds on facebook and on ebay and after a bit of deliberation with somebody on facebook we've agreed on 230 pound cash i'm delivering it to them tonight so we are already in profit on that first auction, albeit a very small amount, but very, very much in profit on that particular item. And now we've got the Jacobean unit, which is listed for £400, and the time recorder, and anything we make from those will now be clear profit from that auction. So, good start. Obviously, we're going to be back down into a loss again because I've purchased these, but this is not going to be something that is a overnight money gainer this is going to be something that's going to roll through and just show that auctions are a viable way of making money so this is what we picked up today from the auction got 
a lot of cameras, including this lovely Olympus Mew. It's not the real big boys, but some good money in that. Loads of more cameras here and lenses. Another box of them in there and another box in there. I'll show you them a bit better going forward. And then, yeah, Harman Kardon set. There's amp, sub, and a couple of speakers in there. So not some bad purchases today. We'll get back and I'll tell you how much I've spent on them and how much we expect to get back and all that good stuff. See you in a bit. Different car, much more space. Let's get this unit in the car and delivered. Let's go and deliver it. And it's gone. The first sale of the auction series has now happened. £230 paid in 50s and a 20 and a few coins. Don't often deal in 50s. It'll be interesting to see if anyone can break that out of blue sale. Um, but yeah, that's gone. Lovely house. If anybody knows Colchester, which is where I delivered it to, it's a very big barracks town. The barracks got a lot smaller over the years and they've converted a lot of the older buildings into properties. And yeah, this was an old stable building so yeah exposed bricks really lovely place and that unit will look lovely there for the artist that she was for her art supply so lovely home lovely unit and a lovely nice bit of profit on that first unit i am outside hobbycraft now i'm going to pick up some helium balloons for my daughter's birthday tomorrow gonna to get home relax for the rest of the evening we'll catch up again when i've had a proper little look into these cameras so here we are we have got the cameras out I've been through them all, had a quick little flick through, seeing what the value on some of them might be. Let's take a closer look and show you. This was the first lot. I paid £35 on the hammer for this, which worked out at £43.40 for everything. There's a few nice bits in here. We've got a Minolta G2 boxed with case, so that's quite nice, maybe £30.35. These will go probably £10.15 each. Uh, the Ilford Sportsman's, they're just not worth anything at all. So I think anything in here that isn't worth, you know, at least a tenner, if not 20, it'll just be going into a big auction bundle. So we'll see how we get on with that. Now, this is the juicy one of the bunch, Minolta SRT 201. There is none of these on eBay at the moment, but there are quite a few on Etsy. Anywhere between about 150 and 200 pounds, people are asking for that. So that's nice. There is also an SRT 101B. Not quite as valuable, but still probably, I think it was about 50 quidish. Um, no real value on this Frank Aldis or this Kodak one. And then we've got quite a nice vintage Canon leather case, but I don't really think they're that valuable. And an unbranded one. But yeah, so definitely a nice lot. For that one there, we'll see some good money out of this one. Next up was this lot. So I paid £45 for this, not the cameras. So from there down, and that came to 55 80 I believe, with fees on top. Now, obviously, this is uh, why I wanted this one in particular. The Olympus Mew, anything with this Mew on there has got some good value about them. This is not the most valuable of that range, but still that's gonna be a solid 80 to 90 pounds at least, because it does come with its case as well. So that was a good start. In terms of value of the others, nothing else particularly mega. Probably see at least 30 for this one, 30 to 40. And I mean, look at this. They don't make cameras like this anymore, do they? Just imagine going, right, just gonna take a picture, smile. Oh, look at that. Do you know what? We need to have another closer look at that, don't we? Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Jeez. Anyway, we'll leave that there. It's actually not very valuable. 10, 15 quid maybe. But like I say, it was this I got it for. I'm going to be making money on these two alone. The majority of these will probably go into a big auction bundle. £40 paid on the camcorder bundle, so just a shade under 50 quid, including fees. And this is probably the worst lot. So that is almost valuable, uh, almost valueless. Look at that. 320 by 240 at 15 frames per second. That is some grainy video. So yeah, probably not going to get any value on that. That is empty. It actually had this in, but it's not worth anything. This is not bad. Um, Sony Handycam Video 8 one. 
actually got a tape in there interesting to see if there's anything on there so it's in very nice condition so i just need to get that charged up because we do have the battery charger so we'll make sure that works that'll be worth that'll probably get me my money back on this lot but this doesn't have a battery and there was nothing in the bag so either find a battery and see if it works or try and sell that as a spares repairs um a nice samsung uh, panasonic one quite a decent camera so, you know it's not that old might be able to sell that for 20 30 quid um we've got some random just unbranded battery charger but then we do also have the sony one here so uh yeah this is probably the worst lot i might i'm not going to be making huge amounts on this but i'll definitely get my money back but yeah the worst the worst bundle of them all the last bit was the harman Kardon bundle with the amp the subwoofer and two speakers again this was another 40 pounds paid on the hammer so a shade under 50 quid the amp slash dvd player is an hs250 not a lot to go by on solds but i think there's there's one being asked 150 spares repairs so if we get this plugged in make sure it's all working that should be nice the sub, there are a few solds on this. I mean, that is a beast. That is one beast of a sub, isn't it? And a couple of speakers, really smart, really nice condition speakers. So again, we'll have to wait and see what we get on those, but gonna make some comfortable money on this. Need to decide if I'll get it plugged in and it's all working, maybe I'll sell it as a bundle. If not, we'll split it up, we'll sell the amp, we'll sell the sub, and we'll sell the speakers. But some, yeah, some comfortable money back in that one. So they are auction number two purchases. Spent just over £200 on that lot. Should hopefully get to double my money, if not a bit more. And that, as I say before, is the kind of aim of the game when it comes to the auctions. It's not like a boot sale where you can kind of semi-expect and should expect to be five, ten times your money on what you buy just because of the sheer volume of what's there and people want gone. That's not the case with the auctions. A bit more research time involved. You can really be pretty sure what you're going to be getting back so I don't mind spending a bit more because I know my money's safe and I know it's going to be coming back. It's not like a risk in a wet, soggy field on a Sunday morning. But yeah, that's what we've got. We've broken even already on auction one. We've still got a couple of pieces, on well, one piece of furniture and the time recorder to go. So fingers crossed we'll get those. But I plan to make these videos roughly a month apart. So we've got a nice month to buy some items, sell some items give a rundown of where we are at the end of the month so we're about just over two weeks in since the first auction purchases so we'll catch up in a little bit fingers crossed i'll be showing you that all of these cameras are listed and we've got some sales let's catch up in a bit it's good she got a bow around the neck like it's decorating It is auction pickup day and I'm here at the auction again to pick up some stuff. I'm now on a new GoPro 12, so hopefully the picture will look a bit snazzier. <laughs> Who knows, I will be able to tell in the edit. But I'm about to head in now and pick up some more stuff. In terms of the sales, I've been pretty slow, unfortunately, in getting those cameras listed because I was at Centre Parks for the whole weekend and yeah, it just um, didn't have enough time to get them listed, but they are listed now. I've got a big bundle on an auction, so before the end of this video, we'll see how that does. Probably be right at the end, because that's kind of pushing the month limit that I said about. Um, but we did have another sale, which was the Minolta SRT-101B, which is sold for $49.99. So a really good price on that, just one camera, almost reaching what I paid for the entire bundle of those cameras. That's the first sale to go on the cameras. Excellent stuff. I'm about to head in now, as I say, and grab a couple more bits. I'll show you what they are. So here's the first lot I grabbed. This Technic Center here. Decent turntable, tuner, cassette deck, amplifier, and this is actually a branded Technics audio rack as well. So yeah, really tough with that. I paid 75 quid on the hammer for 93 pounds all in. I think that's a bit of a bargain. And then 16 pounds on the hammer for this little uh box of clocks so there's going to be a huge amount of uh, profit in here but it was going cheap so I thought I'd see what it was looking like I'll have a check of that a bit later right let's check in for a little update it has been a good few days now it is Monday morning so it was Wednesday that I picked up the Technic set and the clocks and I don't think we've caught up since so obviously went through the Technic set um, 
found out that the record player needed a new stylus, so that has been ordered. That was £9.49, so that's been added on to the total. And everything has been tested. It's all working lovely, jubbly. Um, maybe I'll pop some videos in to show you working. Maybe I won't. If you don't see them, I haven't popped them in. But yeah, that's good. So they've been listed. Some Fingers crossed some really good money back on them. Checked out, obviously, all the clocks. We've got some in here. So this was quite a nice one. A few nice little bits and pieces. That needed a little bit of sticking down on one of the bits of wood. Um, so that was good. And we've actually already sold some. So let's show you some of the sales that went out this weekend. So starting with the cameras, we had the Sony Handycam, which you saw in a little clip. It was fully working. I can't really vouch for how long the battery is going to last, but it did charge and it did um, display picture and record. So that was great. That has gone for $79.99. The boxed Minolta G2 or whatever it was called. Yeah, that's it. That has gone for $34.99. And then the super cool push the button popping out camera has also gone. I will underestimate that one. That's gone for $29.99. I think I said it was worth about 15 quid, but that's gone for $29.99. And two carriage clocks that were in that set uh, bundle have already sold. So this one has gone for £21.84 on a offer. And this one, I think potentially I've undersold this. I listed it at just 9 99 because it didn't have the movement inside. So it's not actually a working clock. It's just, you know, a shell of a clock. And this brand, Rapport, it didn't really seem to sell that well. So I just went, thought, you know, I'll get rid of it, 9 99 and it sold very, very quickly. So, you know, might have undersold that one a little bit, but it's a little bit money back on the clock, so it didn't cost me a great deal. Some of the others are listed for quite a bit more. So there we are. The sales are starting to come through a bit quicker now. Obviously, getting more stock in, so there's more available, and it will sell a bit quicker. I'm not going to give you a little update on the value just yet, because we've got, what, two days left on the auction of those cameras as well as two days until the next auction so i'm bidding on some more bits today we'll see if we get those but i'll do a final roundup in, in a couple of days time see how we've done in month one of auction hunting it is time to check in and see how we've done on the first full month of auctions so i purchased at three auctions this month i also had to purchase a new stylus and a little bit of that oak laminate to repair that cabinet and in total, I spent 564 pounds and nine pence. Now we have had another couple of sales since I last saw you. So I've sold the amplifier and tuner bundle for 129.99 and the film camera job lot that I put together sold for 32 pounds and 50 pence. Now there've been a few sales going through and I haven't really been fully updating you on how we've done. So here it is, here is where we have ended up in month one of auction hunting. Total sales came in at £619.28, taking fees off of £41.52, postage costs of £22.48. We have finished the month on a loss of £8.81. So we've almost broken even on what we've bought. Now, I was fully expecting this. Well, I say I was fully expecting it. I didn't know what to expect. It could have gone really well. It could have gone really badly, or it could have gone in the middle. This month has gone in the middle, but, and it's a pretty big but, we have got just a shade under £1,400 worth of stock listed. Now, even if I get a third of that, we'd be looking at £500-ish profit for the month, which is the double your money. I've mentioned it a few times through this video. Auctions, for me, are a double your money is what I'm aiming for. Quite often, it can be a lot more than that. We may find some gems along the way, but if I double my money, I'll be happy. So to finish the month breaking even, having £1,400 worth of stock sitting there, ready to sell for the month coming, I'm pretty happy. One thing that I will be doing throughout this is I don't want to be sitting on these items for very long. If they don't sell in that first month, I'm going to be doing some significant price reductions, may even start to auction them on eBay, and then eventually, if they're here at the end of three months, they are going through whatever means possible. If I need to put them back into an auction where it's a guaranteed sale, I'll do that. I might take them to a boot sale to sell. Who knows, but we will be getting rid of those items because I want this stock turning over. I want to give you a true representation of the money you can make at auctions without having to sit on it for ages. So there we go. I hope you have enjoyed this first episode of Auction Hunting. There is gonna be plenty more to come. Fingers crossed, plenty more sales from the stock that we bought this month in next month's video. 
and actually I've already picked up the first lot of the next month's auction hunting which is sitting in my car ready to come in the garage and get stuck into. So like I say if you did enjoy the video please hit the like button just to let me know that this kind of stuff is what you enjoy. Hit that subscribe if you want to see more reselling content going forward across the whole board because it won't just be this going forward and yeah thank you for watching catch you on the next one.